Hey what's up guys, Chris Kong here and welcome to another Critics Visuals tutorial. Let's take a look at what we're going to be creating today. Pretty awesome. This was part of a sci fi music video I did back in the day, and I highly urge you guys to check it out. A lot of cool stuff are happening, and the music is not for everyone, but the focus is the cinematography and the VFX and all that awesome stuff. So, with that said, in this specific part of the music video, I want to incorporate a cinematic smoke in the background while having a lot of foreground objects like myself the hair moving in the wind and a lot of other things that made it really hard to pull off but at the same time with the technique I'm gonna show you today is really simple if you have certain things in terms of when you recorded your footage so with that said fire up After Effects and let's get started Okay guys, so we are within After Effects right now and before we get started I do want to let you guys know that the awesome people over at Action VFX do offer some assets for free and that's what I use right here. So I used one of Action VFX is um, smoke assets which you can get for free. Awesome people, awesome VFX, so I will have their link in the description. They have supported the channel by providing a lot of assets for you guys, so we can have a lot of tutorials coming up. So, here's what I have here. I have my composition ready to go, so I'm gonna isolate my clip right here and show you the original. Now, this is not the, like the 100% original clip, it's kind of been color corrected and it has some grade on it, but it doesn't matter for the effect that we're pulling off today. So here is like the rules when you do VFX, like the bare bones of things, right? So one, you need to track your clip because as you can see, we have a dynamic camera movement. So we need to track. Second rule is you need to create specific mats, which mats are basically guides for your VFX assets of when to show or where not to show. So if I de-isolate my clip right here, you can see that the smoke reads that I can show in the sky, but nowhere else basically, which is pretty cool. Which is I want, what I wanna focus today. And third is to use specific effects, as you can see here on, on your VFX clip to make it fit the scene. So if I remove everything, you can see how it looks originally and then with this VFX, how we make it look. So let's take it step by step and see what we have. So here I have my footage, as you can see here. And the way the reason that it's split right here is because I used a multiple of null objects. Again, if you watch the original music video, you will see how long uh, of a shot it was and how complex it was to pull it off. So the way I did this is I split the clip wherever I thought that I needed to change and have a new null object to track because either the original track was out of the shot now or the character kind of like you know goes over the track point so I need to use new track points. This technique was also shown in the Fallen Soldier Fire Hand sci-fi effect which was again from the music video. So. This is why you see the split here. I'm just taking you step by step so you know why I did specific things so you can learn. So at this point, I select, I have this null object. Let me re-isolate everything so we can see the nulls. And this null object, if I press P to bring up the position, you can see it has all the data that we need. So the way I did this is because the, the shot was so complex and so long um, that nothing including the building After Effects tracker or even Mocha would work. So with this technique, it was actually all within After Effects. It was way easier. So the way you do this is you select specific points, you track them, and when you cannot track them anymore, you split the layer and you select new nulls to track. And then you simply split your clips and your smoke assets and you link them to the new null, and then you have a seamless tracking. So that's how I solved the track issue 
in this um, specific VFX shot. Now, moving on, having the tracking points, and of course you will link everything, as you can see, our smoke layer is linked to that null object, so it very uh, detailed, in a very detailed way it tracks it through the scene. But that is not the focus of the tutorial. So, how would you go about putting a smoke asset behind the ground, the character, whatever he's holding. Now, the classic way is that you would duplicate your original clip. So let me actually do this now. So you would duplicate your original clip, Control D to duplicate. And it just has a simple color correction effect for the contrast. And then you go to effect, color correction, colorama, output cycle ramp gray, and then you will play with the black and whites until you have a very clear mat of what you want to do. But as you can see, guys, I'm pretty sure you can already see the problem. When I go through and I'm trying to do this, do you see the problem? My forehead, parts of my fingers, the little clip shows through. So when I would try to put the smoke on top of that, let's see, it would read that I should not show through the whites or basically the luminance, the bright parts, right? Because you were telling it that the bright parts are what you should show to because usually the sky is pretty bright and everything else should be black. But as you can see, guys, in this case, it would not work. So how would you go about doing this, right? because if you try to mask it, it's impossible basically because you have so much detail. You have the hair, you have the dynamic movement of the camera while you also have the dynamic movement of the hands and everything. So it's just crazy. There's no way to either use the rotoscoping tool or even do it by hand. But guys, here's the awesome part. You can simply use the sky as a blue screen. <laughs> Brains exploded. So the way that I recorded this on the day, I made sure that the sky was properly exposed. There was no sun because the sun was quite high in the sky. It was basically mid noon. Um, and by having the sky exposed, and of course the sky as we know is blue, um, usually, <laughs> we can use the sky color as a blue screen and just do that and then use that as a mat for a smoke asset. Isn't that awesome? And of course, you don't have to do this just for smoke. You can do it for anything. Let's say you have a planet. Let's say you have an explosion. Using the sky as a blue screen is the perfect way to key out the sky and use that layer as a mat for any VFX you're doing. So let's take a look at how that was done. So I basically duplicated my footage right here which you can see right here, and have it color-coded blue. I wonder why. And yet, then uh, I used Primate Cure, which is a plugin, but of course um, After Effects has its built-in. I just like to use Primate Cure because I've been using it for a long time and it's my go-to Cure plugin. So again, um, I think After Effects' plugin is called um, Keylight 1.2 or something. Um, so there you go, you can use that. So. I just used Primate Cure, so let me actually isolate and open. And this is the original. And of course, this is the same for any um, key software. You select your background color and then you make very finicky and detailed um, adjustments to make it look the way you want. So if we open it up, you can see the whole sky is gone, but we still have the hair detail, the clip detail, the hair, uh, the eye the arm detail and the cool thing is if I uh, play through the transparency right here we, we can see that we have a, an excellent mat for our smoke asset to follow so then what you do is you put your asset below that mat guide that you used and then you change the alpha mat to whatever you want if you want it to follow um, just nothing basically if i select alpha mat it would only show through the things that are actually there and not transparent but by inverting it you basically tell it hey just forget about anything that is there and just um follow anything that is not there because again if we play before like after effects gives you that grid because there basically there's basically nothing there 
nothing. If you were to render this, it would probably just put a black thing, like a black, because there's no there's no information there. That's why it shows black when you deselect the transparency. So by putting the, the alpha inverted map, you tell it, hey, show through anything that there's nothing, if that makes any sense. So with that done, if I open it up, we can see that we have a great looking smoke, cinematic smoke, and everything looks part of the overall shot because one is tracked, two is we have a great guide, and three, we've used specific effects to make it fit the scene even more. So let me take you through this because it's pretty cool. So I'm gonna deselect them for now. So this is how the smoke asset looks like. And of course, this specific part of the tutorial has to do with specific smoke effects, and in this case, the one we use. So the first thing that I did is to use a curves adjustment. So let's open it up. So as you can see, I'm increasing the alpha so if I go to the alpha, you can see and play through. I, I changed the almost the density of the asset. And then I played with the red channel and the blue channel because as you can see, we have a very warm scene in this case. So I wanted the asset to reflect that. Then I incorporated a Lumetri color effect to boost up the contrast. And of course, guys, on the notion of Lumetri, which of course you can use lots with it. Do make sure to check out the Creative Store um, with the release of the Cinematic Signature LUTs, which is an excellent LUTs collection of 10 epic cinematic presets for you to use. So just something to keep in mind. Highly urge you guys to check the Creative Store out and specifically the Creative LUTs. So, Lumetri Color, just boosting the contrast a bit because as you can see, it's a very contrasty scene and I like the smoke to be more black. Then, as you can see, we have depth of field here as if everything else that was going on was not enough. So, but because we have depth of field here and we can see that the background is quite blurred, it doesn't make sense for the smoke to be sharp, right? So what I did here is I incorporated the Gazan Blur effect just to blur everything out. You see the big difference right here. And the last part, which many people forget and do not keep in mind, is that usually um, when you record something, it's digital, right? Let's be real. And because it's digital, it usually has noise. Like it can be fine noise or cinematic noise. No, I'm not talking about the ugly noise. I'm just talking in general, it has noise. So if I zoom in here, you can see the problem that we're having is that the smoke is perfectly smooth, especially because we included the blur effect, but my clip has already has noise in it. So there is a big difference right there that doesn't really make things stick. So by adding an add grain effect, we do include some noise back in the image, but only in the part of the smoke because this if all of these effects are applied to the smoke layer. And this way, we're really um, getting into making a seamless transition between what was there originally and why is there now because of our VFX. And with that said, guys, this tutorial is pretty much wrapped. Again, do remember the rules of tracking, the rules of creating very detailed mad masks for VFX to follow, and of course, using specific effects to make those VFX layers fit your scene even more. Hey everyone, Chris here. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you want to check more awesome VFX and film stuff, make sure to check the channel out. And of course, do not forget to visit the Critics store full of goodies like free assets, cinema signature lots, the black box, or even becoming an elite and gaining access to the Critics vault so you can take your work to the next level. Hit that subscribe, slash notifications, all kinds of buttons, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Till then, unleash your creativity.